Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Thanks for joining me today. Welcome to my sewing lair. I have a quilt on the wall. I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. I finished it over the weekend. It's a gift from my sister. It's from a free pattern. It's called Betwixt, but I modified it. My modification was to take one of the two blocks and enlarge it. This quilt is just two blocks and it's three colors. One block is a cross block. It's got a nine patch in the middle, four solid, four solid squares, and four corner squares that are Mary Jane's triangles. The second block is simply an Ohio star. So the two blocks together are on a nine patch grid. Now, I chose to enlarge the star, the Ohio star, so that I could get this beautiful geometry that you see here. The original pattern is still stunning and beautiful, but I like this layout better. I used EQ8 to help me, number one, with the layout choice, and number two, with the swapping of um, the colorway so that I felt like I could get something that was uh, balanced in the quilt and I feel like I've achieved that and it's pleasing to my eye. In making blocks such as this and you can see that there are multiple touches on the points and I'm not perfect on all of them but I think I did a pretty good job and making a quilt such as this you really do have to make your test blocks and ensure that your seam allowances, your pressing options, and your um, thread and your fabric all work together so that your block finishes to the cut size that you need and then to the finish size that you need. Those are two really important uh, things. Also, when you're making just two blocks, you're going to get darn expert at making whatever the patches are in the particular block and in this block you know everybody can cut squares obviously but I became pretty darn expert at making half square triangles I had to make very small ones I had to make larger ones that became quarter square triangles and I um, did a lot of research I settled on the magic eight method I um, um, use the, the, the triangle method of trimming these and that all worked really well for me and I was very happy with how that turned out. So when you're, when you're we're doing something like this, you are doing a block immersion and you will emerge as an expert. The other thing that you'll learn is that because it's just simple blocks, you tend to do the cutting and piecing, you know, kind of in a conflated time frame, which means you can get tired very quickly because, you know, the cutting of of these blocks is can be very strenuous, particularly when you're not inclined to take a take a take a break. And I have to say that um, I I fought that a, a little bit on this particular quilt. I also used and I prefer on complex blocks such as these and when I say complex I mean a confluence of seams coming together I used an 80 weight uh, Wonderfill deco bob thread in both my top and bottom bobbins and that keeps the uh, thread bulk down I still have a very strong thread and it presses out beautifully so you will not harm it with your iron. Another thing that I did on this quilt is I simply top stitched. It doesn't require any fancy quilting. These are ba basically small three inch finished blocks and I just did straight line quilting on the uh, on the diagonal on on each on each side so the left diagonals and the right diagonals and it created a, a really nice um, pattern on the back in doing so I did the stitch in the ditch method and the other thing that I did and I'm going to share with you is that I used Wonderfill's Invisifil thread it is not a monofilament thread rather it is a uh, I think it's 
it may be a two ply polyester, it may even be three, but it's very fine weight. And I paired it with an Aurafil thread in my in my bobbin, and I want to share with you a couple of things, and I'm going to get close up for you to do that. All right, we're up close and personal now, and one of the things when you're doing stitching in the ditch is that often you are between a white and a dark, and if things don't completely line up, like for example, um, over here, I'm on the blue, over here I'm on the white, but I basically used a, a hundred weight thread, and as you can see, it's not particularly noticeable, and when I'm in the ditch, it's imperceptible. So I would recommend that you think about if stitching in the ditch is something that you like to do, that this is a really fine solution when you have high contrast between your fabrics and you know, obviously when you're uh, putting these together, it is very hard to get blocks that are super straight together that you can maintain a perfectly straight line and stay uh, within the ditch. So I was really happy with how that turned out. The reason this is um, wrinkly is simply because I launder all my quilts before I give them away. Here's the back of the quilt and I used an Aurafil 50 weight thread and as you can see I've got really good balance. You can't even see the top of the, um, the you know, the top thread and I, the way I bind, I bind first to the back, I machine bind and then I bring it to the front and I end up with only this imperceptible line here and this is what it looks like on the front. The other thing that I want to share, here's the back of the quilt and it's in the gold and I used basically every bit except for um, what I had to trim away and even then that wasn't very much. And you may not be able to see it, but the, um, the quilting, because it was in a straight line, I created um, a very nice um, design that echoed. Um, on the back that uh, outlined the geometry of the front of the quilt. The point of my showing you this is that oftentimes when we start out quilting, and I'll say this for myself, I felt like I had to be a free motion genius. And I just want to impress upon you that quilts such as the one that I'm sharing with you today, you really don't have to do a lot of quilting on it to make it just quite beautiful. The fabric and your pattern is going to be the first thing that anybody sees and straight line quilt, quilting will do the utility of keeping your layers together. The other thing that I did on this quilt and all my quilts now for probably the last several months or maybe even year is I based my quilt on the design wall. I have a large design wall. It is um, basically eight feet wide and eight feet tall. And it allows me to have a super visual of any quilt that I'm basting. And what does that mean? It means the following. Number one, my visual is, is my fabric straight? And I can bet that any of you watching this will have a story or two to tell of when you basted a quilt and things weren't quite lined up the way it is. So being straight means that you're not running out of backing because you've got a weird angle on the front of your quilt. And by the time you get done quilting, you've run out of backing and run out of batting. And I had that issue on one of my quilts. So I started looking at my design wall and saying, well, geez, there's got to be a way that I can quilt based on my design wall. And of course, I let my fingers do the walking. And I found a couple of YouTube videos. Krista Quilts has a good video on it. 
and uh, Patty Thompson has a good video on it. Now, one of the things that I would have caveated prior to this weekend is that if you have mobility issues, it might not be a good um, uh, fit for you because I had to climb up on a stepping stool or, or um, an aluminum workbench to give me a little bit more um, travel room, but even then it was just four feet. And I said to my husband, I said, you know, it'd be nice if you could make me a stepping stool um, or basically a platform, just a small platform that I could easily step up on and travel my design wall. And he did that for me and I want to share that with you. So on the floor in front of my design wall, I have a um, almost finished box. I need to put something on top of it so I don't get splinters. I'm always in my bare feet in my sewing room. But my husband made this box for me, and it's a very simple step. I'm uh, about five, four and a half, four, five, five, and I can't reach the top of my design board um, very easily if I have a larger quilt. So this just allowed me to get safely up on a platform, not worry about falling off, and I can work from left to right on my design board without any fear of that. So um, I actually had a couple of close calls when I failed to latch the legs on my aluminum workbench and I ended up feeling like I was in the Hawaiian surf because I had to surf that thing all the way down to the floor. How I did not take a tumble, I do not know. But if you are thinking about um, quilting on a board and you have a large design board, this is an option for you to make it very safe for you. And the last thing I want to say is that I have really been able to get through my works in process through my Juki Kiri. Um, this was a larger quilt and I was able to really plow through it with my uh, 12 inches of workspace. I didn't have to use my quilt suspension system, my table, and my um, machine handled it really well. And it's uh, it's just been a joy to, to quilt on and it was a great um, investment for me. And I bought it at a super discounted price. It was, it was like new used and I paid $1,500 for it, which is half of the current discounted retail. So I was uh, really very happy with with that. So it's given me some um, excellent comfort and excellent results, and I just I just love it. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. I um, hope that you're working on something joyful, and I hope that you'll consider joining me again and seeing what's on the design board.